Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Shop is speaking here, ready to wrap up chapter 15 and the second half. Uh, so we've covered the first, fifth, first five sections of NMR spectroscopy, um, and I'm going to walk you through, through some other um, aspects that are really important for us. First up, in a section here, 15.6, we're talking about integration or having an integral. So integration is really the area. Uh, we can actually have a stepwise kind of integral, so they're literally steps. And um, hopefully there's a, there's a good kind of alignment. Um, and basically the area that is underneath here, so it's this area here, and that's not going to be important for assessment or anything that you do, but basically we can assign a number that says, gives you a good idea about the ratio of different protons, okay? So often the NMR machine or software afterwards can calculate the area of each peak representing um, uh, that area with a step curve, so as I've drawn it here, and then the curve height represents the integration. So as you can see here, um, you know, we have to compare different heights so I'm drawing this with green, you know, going from here to here, uh, from here to here, and then from here to here. And we can see that, you know, this peak and this peak, they have the same kind of height. And you see it expressed with numbers, so they, they can give you relative numbers. So this is about a 1.5 ratio compared to um, this peak here and this peak here being closer to 1. So we're dealing with a 1 to 1.5 to 1 to 1.5 ratio for the protons that are shown in the spectrum. So what this comes down to is that this is a 2 to 3 to 2 to 3 ratio because we want to get our, um, our full numbers uh, instead of fractions to understand what's going on with our structure and to make the connections, make a connectivity table and understand what's going on. So, uh, as we move on in this uh, section 6 for integration, uh, if we give them, give them a molecular formula, uh, that's where we learned about um, hydrogen deficiency index, uh, we could deduce the structure of this formula um, just by using hydrogen deficiency index and looking at the pattern. Uh, in this case, we're actually given the, rate, the, the actual structure to first learn, but these questions and the skills that are needed for understanding and working in R are spectroscopy. Um, uh, you know, they, they do help us really with understanding how many hydrogens are connected where. So, um, now the molecular formula C5H10O must be known in order to know that the absolute ratio is actually 4 to 6 and not 2 to 3. Um, the integrations are relative. So the relative quantities rather than the absolute count of numbers, right? So this would be a 3, so we have 3 hydrogens here. Uh, please draw the H at the end of each line. Once you draw a line, that's really important. Um, so I'm filling this in right now. And then we have the same actually going on over here. And then we have, let me use this one, let me use some green. And then we have two hydrogens here. So that's, you know, we love the skeletal structures because they get away or they remove clutter, but sometimes we have to draw in the structures again to understand the details. So it's a lot of uh, mastery of organic chemistry has to do with attention to detail. Okay, and then we can see that actually, you know, here we have another two hydrogens, and then here we have another three hydrogens, as we see here, and that Basically, we are dealing with symmetry in the structure, so going down the carbonyl group. So that's why it says symmetry can also affect integrations, and I copied that here twice as I was, um, as I was modifying the, the uh, slides and adding uh, original work as well. Uh, we see here that uh, we have uh, a triplet and a quartet. We're going to say more about multiplicity. And then there might be a number given that already gives you the ratio, or there might be a stepwise curve, or you expect it to predict it just based on other information that is, that is present. 
but, but here it gives you the, the integration values, uh, so 32.5, and, and here we have 48. So, so there could be different numbers uh, involved. Sometimes using a ruler and using the height can also help you solve the problem. All right, let's, let's move, move on to multiplicity because that is a very, very important um, and powerful tool. So multiplicity is also referred to as splitting patterns because, as we said, we don't just count the lines and say that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten signals. No, these are actually four signals. Uh, and we can have many more splittings. And depending on how many lines we have, we call it single, double, triple, quartet, uh, quintet, sextet, uh, septet, and you know what, we can sometimes not tell there's no complex splitting, and then we call it a multiplex, and use the abbreviation again. Um, for you, I would make sure to understand uh, uh, some of the background. Basically, what we need to do is we have to use the n plus 1 rule uh, in here. Um, you have also a table in which the splitting patterns are predicted, uh, so, so n is the number of neighboring photons. So you're also going to look at, let's say there's one hydrogen here, and then I'm going to draw there's one other neighboring carbon, and then how many hydrogens are here. And uh, basically, this will now tell us how these are splitting, provided that other things, because there are open bonds in the structure, uh, so there is another line here, and here, and here. And there could be something that doesn't have any other hydrogens, could be phenyl groups or other things. And now, if I want to determine what the multiplicity is for this hydrogen here, I have to look at the neighboring carbon and count these two hydrogens. And then I say n is the number of neighboring hydrogens, which is 2 plus 1. So this will show up as a triplet. Okay? Right, so this are these two hydrogens, we need to look at one carbon over, count the number of hydrogens, add plus one. So n equals one, plus one is two, which means that these here would actually show up as a doublet. Okay. Uh, I promise you the more problems you work, the easier it will become. I know that this is very abstract material, but when you practice this, it will become much easier. Now we have more detailed uh, information also outlined in your textbook. Uh, so, so for multiplicity here in section 15.7, uh, basically what you have to understand, I mean, it's those magnetic affects, it would actually be magnetic affects. Um, uh, so each each atom that has spin capability, remember that odd number, so hydrogen can spin, increase its own magnetic field, and the neighboring hydrogen can also spin with its magnetic field, and they kind of split, split each other. So we often say we do these trees, so, you know, we say that with n plus 1, so the neighboring hydrogen is Hb, plus 1 is 2, and then you will see a doublet. And it turns out the same is true for the other hydrogen. Uh, so there will also be a doublet. And I'll already tell you, although there's another slide about coupling constants, uh, the width here uh, represents the coupling constant. If they are coupling with each other, they will have the identical coupling constant. Okay? So, um, basically, all this comes down to that uh, the protons can align with or against the external magnetic field, so there will be two different magnetic environments for HA, and then you can repeat that again uh, for HB. Um, so, in this case, it would be a doublet, so if I was to draw this underneath, you would have one doublet for, so I'm going to try to get that width, and then there would be another doublet for the other proton, and see how, this is not a quartet, uh, these are roughly the same height, and maybe this is not the best kind of drawing here, but you have other examples in the textbook. Going on to um, another situation, so F. That was the first example I showed you. So we have uh, two protons, and we, again, we want to look for adjacent carbons, neighboring carbons, and then counting the corresponding hydrogens. So we have to figure out what is the adjacent carbon. If I'm, you know, if, this, if we're trying to analyze for HA, this is the first example. We look at the neighboring carbon, count these, plus one, that gives a triplet. And there we are, and we have a triplet. And this is a different kind of illustration, but really, what's most important is apply n plus 1 rule, and that's how you easily get the multiplicity for that structure. Okay. 
And then here, uh, if we're looking at HP, so those are indicated in this bluish uh, kind of color. Again, they're going to feel the presence of the neighboring proton. We're looking for the adjacent uh, carbon, so neighboring carbon. Um, let's see, hold on. Uh, I think I got a little bit off. Uh, so as we're looking at these two, actually, <laughs> there's something missing here. Oh my goodness, I did not realize this. So this is supposed to be, this is actually a pattern. So this is, this is a slide from Wiley. Uh, this would have to be, um, I'm not sure that I can add a different color here. Let me, let me try to find a different color for blue. I did not catch this. Um, reviewing and making us spend a lot of time making the slides. So this one here, so let's use that color. What's shown here is actually the situation of, and this case happened, more human, and um, some of these slides were provided by the publisher. Okay, so this has got to be consistent area for HA is split by three neighboring carbons. Now we have three, so here's your CH3 group. Uh, so the field of presence, these are all equivalent because of free rotation. Um, and so we have three neighboring carbons plus one gives four, and that will now give you a quartet. All right, sorry about that little bit, but I'm glad I caught it as I was walking through this. All right, so here's a summary of multiplicity. There are three key rules for splitting. Equivalent protons cannot split one another. They have to be non-equivalent. That's why we made such a big deal out of it, or I did, at the beginning. Um, to split each other, photons must be within a two or three bond distance. It's usually two. Um, so we have actually um, a new terminology, so they're general. If the two hydrogens are attached to the same carbon, you may think, well, but that's a CH2 group. Yes, but there could be other things here that will give a different environment to A and give a different environment to B. Remember that this is a simplified drawing uh, or map and that we have the idea of a tetrahedral carbon. Okay? Then we have, so these are two bonds from each other. These are one, two, three bonds from each other. Uh, one, two, three, four. So that's also possible. Um, and usually we don't see anything here, so it says too far apart, but I have to be honest with you, there are some uh, rare exceptions where we can also see interactions. But uh, clearly, these are the most important ones for you to remove first and foremost and to practice many examples. Remember that practicing, working through these, through these um, slides and the reading will help you greatly succeed and achieve mastery in organic chemistry. So the, the N plus 3 rule only applies to protons that are equivalent, that the speed pattern of search for the proton shown below would be more complex than a simple triplet. All right, let's, let's look at that. Um, now, when we are dealing with this, for one, we are actually having, uh, we have a double bond that is rigid. You might have, uh, you might, I hope you remember when you covered alkenes, there were six trans isomers, and then later on you learn about E and Z isomers. Uh, so basically, you know, um, we need to look at um, the relationship here. So this hydrogen, if we're looking two bonds away, we could actually say, well, there must be something happening with this hydrogen, right? Uh, so both red hydrogens now are attached to an alkene, but they are not equivalent, Why? Right? This one is closer to the hydroxyl group, the OH group, the alcohol, um, and it's kind of uh, on the other side of the double bond, right? While this one is on the same side, so we would now say that this has a Z relationship uh, well, this is on the other side, uh, and, and then between the two of them, there would be an E relationship. So there's some complex splitting patterns that you can find, and again, I recommend you look at all those uh, skill builder uh, skill segments in your textbook that can help you understand, you know, practice the skill and uh, to 
achieve um, mastery in organic chemistry. All right, uh, next another uh, slide on multiplicity. We photon with a couple to its neighbors called the coupling constant. Um, I wouldn't call it a degree, but basically we're looking at the width of these. So this is a true quartet. This is what you have. You have a lower kind of peaks on the outside and a tall, two taller peaks on the inside. Uh, while with a triplet, you can have one tall peak and two other lower peaks. Um, but if the, if the width, if the spacing between these lines, so it's the same here and here and here. So this is actually called JAB because this represents the splitting of either one of these two with the B hydrogens. Um, and then uh, you also can see that on the other side, so these two C the three, so that we would be a quartet, vice versa. These three C two plus one that's the triplet. And again, this has to be the same width, and that's when we know, you know, the coupling constants are identical, um, and it means they have the same width. So that's really important uh, for for moving forward and uh, analyzing splitting patterns. Uh, the next slide on multiplicity shows you some other examples. Um, it says here that high field strength instruments will be better resolution between peaks because the coupling constant is a small percent of the overall width that's in availability. Um, you know, you can have anywhere from 300 to 400 to 500, even to 700 or 800 megahertz spectrometers. Uh, they cost a lot of money, let me just say that. Um, you know, when, um, when, when this uh, began decades ago, uh, there were all 60 megahertz. And see the difference between higher resolution versus higher resolution here. But the, um, the way they appear is still going to be the same. It's just the resolution is better, and this is a little bit zoomed out. Um, but um, I think, I think that's, that's, that's all we need to know for, for this part right here. Um, next slide has a little bit more information. So, uh, so much about organic chemistry is about pattern recognition. And the same is true for spectroscopy. So here's another example for what is an ethyl group. Right? So we see this here, CH2, CH3, that's, that's your ethyl group. group. And, and that's, that's an easily recognizable pattern, uh, either in alkyl chains, chains or on esters, because you're going to have a triplet and a quartet with the same coupling constant. Okay? So, so that's, that's what's actually shown here. here. Um, and, and again, again same, same coupling constant is necessary. necessary. This one here is, is not an ethyl group. group. There is a triplet and a quartet, but see how the width is different? So please recognize that. And yet one more example, um, if we have a peak with an integration equal to 9, that likely has to do with a T-butyl group. What's a T-butyl group? It is a carbon connected to three other carbons, so that's this one. And that would be nine hydrogens, nine protons, and there we are. Okay. Now, if we had an isolated isopropyl group, we could have a doublet and a septet. So, you know what an isopropyl group looks like? Uh, you should know. So, isopropyl, and this was covered uh, early on in organic chemistry, it is a propyl group where the connection is made on the middle carbon. So, now you have one hydrogen here and three hydrogens here. I recommend that you know so if you fill that in. And that way, you can then understand why there is a septet and a doublet. Uh, again, and I sent out a number of emails and posted some more clarifying remarks on e-learning. Make sure that you take copious notes because the skill of drawing structures and analyzing structural features will help you receive or get to mastery in organic chemistry so you can pass with a good grade. And here we have something that's a little bit more complex. So, uh, and yes, it's called complex splitting pattern. 
um, what is happening here. Um, and, you know, I met, there are other courses that can be taught that just focus on spectroscopy. Uh, so you're really just learning a little bit um, some of the uh, uh, introductory information for spectroscopy. Um, so complex splitting patterns says that we need to pay a little bit closer attention to what's going on here. And the molecule is shown uh, here to the right. We have something highlighted in green and a bluish or uh, teal color and red color. And, you know, this would signify a halide. Um, now, even though they do technically have very different electronic environments, the differences are not really big enough and, and sometimes coincidence can play a role as well. So, so it tells you here that the molecule where we have HB um, is split into a quartet by HA because we have three on the left hand side and we ship it by uh, HC, right? So we could actually see a multiplet. Sometimes we can tell the difference. Now, GEB is much greater than GBC and now the signal can appear as a quartet of triplets. Okay. So, and we see there are four lines, one, two, three, four, and each of these, that, that's the quartet, and then each, quartet, each signal in the quartet is split into three, and that's why we call it a quartet of triplets. That can, it can make a big difference. Um, let me move on to the next slide, which is also about multiplicity. We're almost done with that. Um, now, if the coupling constant BC is much greater than JAB, the signal will appear as a triple of quartet. ABC is similar to JAB, so here's the, the important component is similar, uh, and that can happen. Then several lines can overlap, and the signal is called a multiplet. And we basically just use M. for multiplet, okay? Moving on to the next slide. Uh, here's a note about, basically it's about exchangeable protons. Exchangeable protons, I mentioned the last. So let me start out with a little introduction. Um, splitting is not a serve for some protons. So here you have alcohol, ethanol, the hydroxyl photon, which would be this one. That is the hydroxyl and the hydrogen OH group. Um, and other labile or exchangeable protons undergo rapid exchange with trace amounts of acid, but also, uh, yeah, you can have trace amounts of acid issue in, 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 uh, in chloroform, and we're using CBCO3 as a, as a solvent. And uh, we can actually formulate a mechanism. I recommend you look at it and just think it through. Um, now, the protons fall into carbon split each other, but the hydroxyl group is not split. And that can happen. There are different factors that come into play. The other thing I want to recognize is that um, shielding and shielding effect of neighboring protons uh, give a signal that is often broadened. Uh, so, so you see here, it's not really a very precise singlet, it looks like, like one, but sometimes um, a proton um, can have broad signals that are really anywhere between, uh, let's say, 2 and it goes all the way to 5.5 because there's some concentration dependence. So, uh, and this is not only really the case for hydroxyl groups, this can also happen for molecules that have NH groups. And there we go. And we'll take a, a break here, and I'll see you in the next segment. Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Shaffer speaking here, ready to wrap up chapter 15 and the second half. 
so we covered the first few, first five sections of NMR spectroscopy, um, and I'm going to walk you through through some other um, aspects.